without a doubt, it is a pleasure to see you here. What would be the point of me being here if you didn't show up? I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of September 22nd. Now, I do the same thing in all my shows. I go out hunting for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. We're looking at penny stocks, hot penny stocks to be exact. Now, when I go looking for hot penny stocks, I do it by going to the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that has a breakout setup or a lot of volume coming in, then I'll go rustling around through all the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, I've got a hot penny stock, one to keep an eye on. And I've got three very interesting stocks to share with you today. First one we're going to take a look at is going through some changes. This is NHMD, Nate's Food. First off, her chart, as you can see, it is a triple zero. We normally don't look at triple zero stocks because they don't move very fast. And as day traders, that is primarily what we're looking for, things to move quickly. Well, this had a good jump. She went from triple zero one, the absolute lowest price you can buy any stock for on the market, up to triple zero six, falling back to the current price of triple zero five and a half. Now, this is an exciting movement, folks, but she just had big news come out about a reverse merger that is going to change her revenues in a very huge way. So I think we need to keep an eye on this one. Her current ticker is NHMD. That D will fall off when everything is done. That is a temporary fixture to the ticker. So as I said, she finished the day at 0.055 with 120% gains. She is on the pink tier, she's current, and she has a transfer agent verified. We don't see a verified profile here. Those are the two ticks I'm always telling you to look for. It's validated information. And when you're trading stocks on the OTC, information is the big deal. We don't get a lot of it down here. And the pinks get the absolute least. So whenever you get those green ticks, you're getting validated information. That's a good thing with a pink. So what does this company do? Well, this is an old description. This is not exactly what they're doing right now. This is what they tell us they're doing. The company operates two divisions, food development and distribution and Bitcoin mining. The company's focus is on the development of food products for distribution in wholesale membership stores and into retail grocery stores. The company also operates a Bitcoin mining division as a hedge against inflation. I like companies that understand the hedging. So what was the relative volume around the company today? I don't believe my eyes. What an explosion, folks. Going from 62 million up to 945 million shares. Just under a billion for a pink on the OTC. Now, all the markets are suffering with volume right now, but the OTC has been beat bad. We were getting an average of 60 to 70 billion shares a day before the market went to pot. And here recently, we're doing under 5 billion shares a day. Well, Friday, we did 5.7 billion. Well, this company did almost a billion shares. That means they got one-sixth of all the shares that moved on the OTC market, one company, and there are 12,085 companies on the OTC market. So when you find a company that takes one sixth of all the shares moved, you can't turn your back on that one. You got to pay attention to it. Share structure for Nate Foods. Oh, a lot of shares here too. Outstanding share count is 2.8 billion. Insiders own about 15 million shares, leaving us with 2.8 billion. It is a huge float. Now, we are going to look at news. They are canceling a billion shares, but I can't tell if it's coming off of the authorized or coming off of the outstanding. They don't mention paying a price for these shares. In either case, I do like to see shares taken away, but I would like to know where they're exactly coming from. Financials for NHMD. At the end of 2022, she did $70,000. We've got to add three zeros up here to any of the numbers on these charts. And her fiscal year ends in May. So they just ended their 2023 in May. They did $25,000, but they're losing money. So they're really not making any money right now. Coming down to that quarterly, 
Well, in the last quarter, they did $12,000 and they lost $7,000. But this is all going to change drastically. Let's take a look at how that's going to happen. We've got some very interesting filings over here. I'm going to jump into two of these. First one, they have announced that they are going to be issuing a dividend. It will be paid September 30th for anything you owned on and up to August 31st. Now, don't get too excited. The dividend is really, really small. This is a 502.000002 for every share you own. In other words, for every 100,000 shares you own, you'll get two cents. Pretty exciting, isn't it? <laughs> the other piece of news is a material definitive agreement, and this is a news press as well. This is big, folks. On September 19th, the company finalized an agreement with JP Energy Group. As an integral part of this transaction, all current members of the board of directors and officers will resign from the old company, effective September 20th. This is a reverse merger, a takeover. On May 31st, 2023, JP Energy Partners entered into a contract for the supply of up to 600,000 metric tons of sugar to be delivered to China comprising of two shipments. The first shipment is to be about 250,000 metric tons and the second shipment consists of about 350,000 metric tons. Now check this out. The contract has a maximum payment of approximately $268 million, including all the fees and the discounts. It's important to note that to date, no shipments have been taken place under this contract and JP Energy Group is in the process of finalizing the bank financing for the transaction, which is contingent to close on it in about 75 days, they said. In the news press, they said in about 75 days, they should be able to take care of all the details and have this thing closed. Well, they just did $7,000 worth of business last quarter. $12,000 worth of business the entire year last year. And now they're going to be doing $268 million worth as soon as this deal closes. That's a huge jump. Now you know why the triple zero stock is moving so quick right now. So we have that cash dividend being announced back in July. A billion shares being canceled, but as I said, they don't say they bought these for any price. They just say they're canceling them. They don't mention outstanding. They don't mention authorized, so I'm not quite sure where they're coming from, but a billion shares is a lot to see go bye-bye, so we're happy for that. And then what we just read, Nate's Food announces reverse merger and change of control with JP Energy Group to drive global expansion. Now, I don't know that they're going to quit anything that they're doing. I know it's a takeover, but I didn't read anything that said they're going to quit their bit mining or they're going to quit anything else. Maybe this is just an add-on. Some more due diligence will definitely help. So let's go take a look at this chart. She's already moving. She keeps moving and gets into that double zero range. She could move a lot faster. Are you ready to do some charting? God knows I am. This is Nate Foods. This is ticker NHMD. And we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim, also known as TOS. If you like it, mosey on over to TD Ameritrade. They'll give it to you for free. And signing up with them, that don't cost you anything either. So we are looking at a one-year, one-day chart for NHMD. Our 52-week high hit in November last year of 001. And she hit a low you rarely ever see. Maybe you've never seen it. She actually hit zero. Zero. She stepped out of the game. I've not seen this before. Right here is our absolute low that you can buy a stock on the open market for. Triple zero one. Though the price can go to four zero one, five zero one. I've seen that before. Those are on the expert market. But actually hit zero? <laughs> not seen that. In either case, she got back into the game, and you can see on our one-day, one-year chart, she is breaking out strong. Gotten over that 200 and is way up here. Volume was super strong these last two days, and look at our oscillators. They aren't just going to the moon. They are going to Mars. So what do you think our six-month, four-hour chart looks like? Yeah, it's hot too. 
Six months ago, our high was triple zero seven. Hitting that low of zero, she bounced back into the game at triple zero one, and she did get over the 200 many a times, but didn't go anywhere. She just kept coming back down to the floor until these last two days, and she has surged. Starting off on the floor, triple zero one, she went all the way up there to triple zero six. That is a solid 600% gains in two days, and she fell back just a smidge. She is up here at triple zero five five. Osculators, come on folks, they're on fire. Every single one of them is pushing up. RSI is over the overbought. It's at 71 right now. It looks absolutely luscious and delicious to me. Our 20 day, one hour view, just as pretty. She was flat, bouncing off of that triple zero one, hanging on to that 200 for days, doing nothing. And then she took off, Bouncing off of that 50, getting on to a nine day, having a little bit of pullback after market. Outside of that, she launched herself and we don't see a whole lot of retreat right now. Osculators on our one hour chart are just as hot as the four hour in the one day. They are still surging up. You can't go wrong if every osculator is pointed to the moon. Five day, five minute chart. That is beautiful. There it is, triple zero one, the floor, and up to triple zero six in a few days there. It was actually, uh, the low is back four or five days ago, but she was on that low two days ago. She got up on top of that 50, bounced off of it, went straight to her nine day, it looks like, skipped the 20 altogether, and she is floating on that on her five minute chart. She hit a high, went sideways, pulled back, and came back up. She is right now, right there, right on the nine day SMA. All of our SMAs are lined up nicely, evenly spread, looks great. Osculators, they've had a wee bit of pullback because of that one red bar, but they are still up there, still hot, still looking good. I like NHMD. I like the fact that her revenues are gonna go from 12,000 to 248 million. I mean, just like that. And they're gonna have a new business. And I don't know what they're doing with their old business, but what they're doing now is looking a lot better than what they were doing then. NHMD, watch it tomorrow. Our next top penny stock is a pink as well. Now I gotta tell you folks, I'm leery about sharing information with you on pinks because they are the riskiest stocks you can invest in on any of the markets. You get the least amount of validated information from them. We gotta take management's word virtually for everything. So any information we get, you do have to take with a grain of salt. However, that doesn't stop the charts from moving. This is ticker PDRO, Pedro's List, not to be confused with Craigslist. Now her chart is hot. Since the beginning of July, she has been in an uptrend. And since the beginning of July, the company's been putting out news supporting the run. And she looks like she's gonna continue to run because things are just about ready to open up. Everything they're doing is coming to a head right now. So Pedro's List. She finished today at $2.52 and had 12% gains today. As I said, she is on the pink tier. She's current. She has a verified profile. She has a verified transfer agent. Looks real good. She has independent directors listed here. Now, the only reason I know you list independent directors here is when you have plans to uplist, which they do. And they also have a stock promotion going on. Now, that's in red. They're warning you about that. Not that stock promotion is a bad thing. They've got people out there writing articles about them, letting you know about their company. Nothing wrong with that. But it can lead to exaggeration. It can lead to lies. It can lead to scams. So they're warning you, just be on your toes, be on guard. And the company currently is a shell risk. They have a business, but they're not making any money. They are right at that point right now. So what does Pedro's List do? Well, presently the company's operations are based solely in Mexico, where they focus on connecting homeowners and consumers with service professionals for home repair, maintenance, and improvement projects. 
Pedro's List provides the technology tools and resources to allow homeowners to find local, pre-screened, custom-reviewed service professionals and instantly book appointments online or through the mobile application. An experienced team has been assembled to implement the plan to offer these services to consumers in a better way. Our plan is to expand to other non-USA-based markets once we successfully launch our mobile app and functional homeowner provider website. It's primarily targeting the Spanish communities. They speak both English and Spanish, but it is primarily for the Spanish people. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, just a little bit of increase, not much, going from 175,000 shares up to 186,000 shares. What sort of share count we got with Pedro's? Well, look at that. We are in the neighborhood of a low float. Outstanding share count is about 63, 64 million. Restricted shares. These are what the insiders own, the management. They own 51 million out of that 63 million. Mm-hmm. We end up with about 12 and a half million in the float, which isn't bad at all. Financials for the company. Well, they tell us she's a shell risk, which tells us that she's not making any money, which is the case. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Oh, goodness. They've got $2,000 in the bank. We got to add three zeros to that. They have $2,000 total assets and they have total liabilities of 377,000. So it doesn't look real good, but what you can see is they are most definitely a startup company. Things are just getting going right now. Disclosures for Pedro. Well, all we've got over here is a whole bunch of financials. The NT 10 QAs, those are not filing our financials on time. That buys them five days. So you shouldn't see the 10Q come after the NT 10Q any more than five days later, like here, from 615 to 620. So they are late most of the time, but they get them there. So let's take a look at that news now. The company doesn't have much news, but all of it's relevant. It all started back in July when the stock started running. They announced that they had launched their website back then and launched their advertising initiative. They had hired a company called Think Inc., which was going to help brand them. The next piece of news tells us they forged a relationship with Allegro Response. Allegro is going to be their customer support organization. They're training them to take care of all the phone calls, the emails, the chats. They are going to be the people that set up the appointments, that send out emergency crews for things that happen in the middle of the night. And then the third deal was with uh, Group Medios. This is a company that is going to advertise their home improvement services all around Mexico. And they are uplisting to the OTCQB. They've already submitted the information. That is a good thing. That means their financials are going to be audited, actually looked at by a CPA, and their price has to stay above a penny, though that's really not a problem with this company. And the last piece of news is they are getting ready to launch their app with Apple and Google Play. That is right on the fringe of happening right now. So everything is coming together. They've got everybody they need. They've got their website. They've got their app. It's just all happening. So we could be there. And it's already getting a warm-up running start, don't you think? Oh, you haven't seen the chart yet. Well, let's go take a look at that chart. We're going to start this off looking at our one-day, one-year chart for Pedro's List, ticker PDRO. Pedro came on the market. October 3rd at about $2.15. And from $2.15, she fell all the way down to $0.10 cents in May. And then it was just last Thursday, she hit an all-time high of $3.21. Now, as she was climbing up, floating on her nine-day SMA, she was putting down these pillars. You see these coming down, stabbing right on top of the 20? Those shouldn't scare you. That is a bridge. It's holding up that nine-day highway for us. She did fall off of that high, came down to the nine-day, has tagged it many a times, and she is staying up there. Looks secure. We got lots of volume that has come into the picture since the uptrend started. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. 
So this upsurge started at the very beginning of July. And that's when all their news started. The news started coming out and she has been bouncing her way up, going through the 20 and stabbing on to the 50. You see this? Those tell me that she is building a structure. Those big long wicks that stab through the 20, that grabs it and then you staple it into this 50. Boink, it's not gonna move. So I like to see these coming down as she's climbing. And if you get lucky, maybe you could buy down there if you get lucky, because they're not down there very long. These are normally one minute bounces. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, like I said, she fell. She's now on her 50 day SMA bouncing. And you can see right there, she is starting to climb again. Our oscillators, they are in recovery. You can see this is skimming off of the line, starting to churn up. Our MACD is underneath the line, but it's had an angle change and it's starting to come up. And our RSI has jumped from 41 up to 53. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, that is a nice 200 sliding up the screen like that. There's our price riding on the 50 day SMA with that spike coming through the 50 and stapling it to the 200 holding it all up nice and secure. Now she should have brought this one down and that would have probably prevented this slippage here. That's the way I see it. So she's come back down and though she looks like she's floating above the 200, we just saw on the four hour chart, she's bouncing off of the 20 day on that chart. So that's what's supporting it right here is the 20 day SMA on the four hour chart. And you can see she's climbing right now. She is working her way up all green bars right up underneath that 50 day SMA. Oscillators are PPO, percentage price oscillator. That's got a crossover going on right now. Our MACD, which you read the same, the PPO and the MACD are kind of the same instrument. MACD uses the full price. PPO, percentage price oscillator. <laughs> right, uses a percentage of the price. Well, we had our crossover on our MACD two days ago and she's about ready to cross the signal line and we got our green bars getting bigger and bigger and accumulating. And our RSI is pushing up, but it is cool. It's down at 52 right now. Five day, five minute. Whoa, lots of volatility. So she's up here above the 200 at $2.94 fell all the way down to $2.03. And in that same day, she bounced right back up, hitting a new high of $2.99. Then she started bouncing and the bounces were getting smaller and smaller. But as you can see, this 200 day SMA is coming downhill. But she has just put herself, there, there was her first crack, breaking the ice, coming down, bouncing and jumping up on top. This was my indicator, this was my launch, and there's my settling. She is getting ready to pounce again, folks. She's tagged that 20 and she is starting to build up pressure. You can see our PPO is starting to push up. Our MACD is right there. Yep, it is pulling away right now. And our RSI is now up to 58. Again, I like Pedro's for what's about to happen. When is it gonna happen? I don't know, but the chart's been growing in anticipation. So we have to wait, but gee whiz, folks, this stock looks good. She's been growing for three months, right? PDRO, it isn't gonna hurt you to put this on your watch list. Now, what would an episode of On Top and Hot be without an atypical breakout chart, right? Well, I've got one for you. This is Pixis Tankers ticker PXS. Her chart is a primed atypical breakout chart. It's breaking out right now and with good cause. This company is rolling in cash right now. They just made another deal where they got millions and millions of dollars and they want to take all this money and expand their business. Now looks like a great time to be looking at PXS. She finished the day at $3.78 with about 5.5% gains. Now this penny stock is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. There's benefits to trading major exchange penny stocks over the OTC penny stocks. One, they're free to trade. There's no transaction fees with major exchange stocks. Two, you can trade them pre-market, after-market. No special permissions or qualifications necessary. Just get in there and trade. There's lots of gains to be made. 
Just remember, it's not a day trade, so you got to change that time period on your order to day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You got to get extension in there or it won't see your order. And you can't do any of that with OTC stocks. So what does PXS do? Well, they tell us over here in the news press, the company currently owns a modern fleet of four product tankers. And those are actually their tankers that you're seeing there. They are engaged in seaborne transportation of refined petroleum products and other bulk liquids, as well as the controlling interest in a joint venture they just got into that owns a single dry bulk vessel. The company is positioned to opportunistically expand and maximize its fleet due to significant capital resources. They're not kidding there. Competitive cost structure, strong customer relationships, and an experienced management team whose interests are aligned with those of its shareholders. Well, that's nice to hear. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had a nice jump, about 500% increase, going from 35,000 shares up to 178,000 shares. Now, no, they're not huge numbers, but there is an increase here, and it's got to start somewhere, right? Share structure for the company. We'll look at that. We've got ourselves a low float. Outstanding share count is at 10.6 million. Anything under 10 million is a legitimate low float. Now, I don't know what the float is, but I'll bet you it's a legitimate low float. Financials for PXS. Well, they're making money. Over the last two years, it's doubled, going from 25 million, don't forget those three zeros up here, to 58 million. And they're making profit, lots of it. Looking at the quarterly, oh, we're, we're not going to get the quarterly here, but we can take a look at the balance sheet. Cash in the bank. They've got almost $8 million. You've got to bring those three zeros over here as well. Total assets, $138 million. Total liabilities, about half of that, $77 million. So they're looking pretty good, and they're going to look better when you see the news. Looking at the disclosures, I actually did jump into these. There wasn't anything there we needed to be concerned with. So let's just jump straight on into that news. So there's only two pieces of news here worthy of taking a look at. One came out on the 18th of this month. One came out on the 22nd. Taking a look at the one that came out on the 18th. Pixis Tankers announces closing of Ultramax JV Investment. The company closed on its previously announced newly formed dry bulk joint venture to acquire and own and operate a 2016 Japanese-built 63,000 dry weight Ultramax carrier. The company invested approximately $6.8 million in cash for 60% ownership interest in the joint venture. After funding our joint venture investment, the company had approximately $31.9 million in total cash. The company plans to continue to optimize their fleet amortize their debt, and repurchase common shares under their authorized $2 million program. As of September 15th this year, the company has already spent over a half a million dollars to acquire about 147,000 shares at an average price of about $3.59, bringing that share count down to a low share count. That next piece of news came out on the 22nd. The company announced that it has agreed to sell the vessel Pixis Epsilon for a sale price of $40.7 million in cash. The repayment of the outstanding indebtedness in secured by the vessel and the payment of various transaction costs of the company, they expect to receive cash proceeds of approximately $26 million. Assuming completion of the vessel sale during the fourth quarter of 2023, the company expects to recognize a non-cash gain from the asset disposition of approximately $16.8 million or $1.57 per current outstanding common share. You can add $1.57 to that price. That's what they're saying there. Our current total cash balance of $30 million is now expected to increase with the net cash sale proceeds of $26 million. So you now are looking at $56 million the company has to use to expand their business. 
They got lots of money. They haven't told us exactly what they want to do, but I bet they can do it with all that. So let's go take a look at that chart because she's already breaking out and definitely one to watch tomorrow. Yeah, let's take a look at PXS. This is Pixis Tanker's one year, one day chart. Our 52 week high hit in February of this year of $6.26. And then September 8th, she hit a low of $3.25. And as you can see, even on the one year chart, she's breaking out right now over that 50 day SMA. Dropping down to that six month, four hour view. Our bubbles are the same here. Once she got underneath that 200, she had nothing to say to it. She never got close, never even tried to push up towards it. It wasn't until she came out from underneath all of her SMA, she pushed towards the 200, tapped it, didn't even break through, just tapped it pulled back to the nine day and then launched. And I mean, she didn't even fall back and test the 200 on this side. She just took off. Even after market hours, she is still climbing. All of our SMAs are looking beautiful. Volume is increasing, getting stronger and stronger. And all of our oscillators are on fire or going to the moon right now. This looks brilliant. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on for about 12 days here. She was just falling underneath the 200 day SMA, broke it here about six days ago and started pushing up, has now turned the 200 day SMA up. She is now starting to climb. All of our SMAs are in beautiful position right now. Osculators, PPO is climbing, pushing up strong, just like the MACD and our RSI is settled at 64. Five day, five minute view. <laughs> Not a bad chart. $3.57 back here over top of everything. She bounced over the 50. It looks like a rubber ball bounce. What I mean by that, it's like she went under the water and came right back up. She had no intention of staying underneath there. And once she came up, you could see how excited she was. That first bar was exciting. That says, I'm ready to climb. And she was. She came back down right to where that bounce started and she took off. And she was down here at uh, 359 and went to 390. And then she cooled off a little bit falling back here to 380. But look at that bounce after market. Boom, another huge bounce, just like that one, right? Coming off of the 50 and pushing up. Everything is looking strong, including our osculators. Look at that bounce, that ricochet. Ba -ching! We got another one. Ba -ching! <laughs> and our RSI took a big jump from 42 up to 64. This looks good, folks. PXS. They got a lot of money. They're making strong revenues and they're about ready to spend that money for their own good. Maybe they'll do something for us. Who knows? But it is worth a watch. PXS. Put this on your watch list. I don't waste time showing you stocks. I don't want you to put on your watch list. So to ask you to do it is silly. But to ask you to do more due diligence is not silly. I know a lot of you rely on what I say as the end to all of it. There's more folks. I don't have enough time to go into everything as deep as we possibly should. So if you see a company you like, take time to do some more due diligence. It isn't going to hurt. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.